morning to you, Emerson. It's Tuesday, April 23rd, and on today's show, we'll show you how you can get involved with the Emerson Channel's orientation series. And musical guest Ethan Thompson will be performing for us live in studio today. You got to hear him rehearsing before the show. He has a great sound. He does. An awesome performance. But uh, in the meantime, I'm Joshua Sackheim. And I'm Megan Mitchell. Welcome to Good Morning Emerson. And uh, Megan, it's no one's favorite time of year. <laughs> I know. Uh, finals. You know, the thing is, especially with the past week that uh, yeah. most Emersonians and all Bostonians had. It's, it's been rough. It's been extremely rough, yeah. and that's why we have some stress-free relievers to, to yeah. give you guys um, to hopefully make your time with finals a little bit less mm -hmm. stressful. You, you can overcome, you can persevere, and you can be <laughs> what you want to be. That's what I tell myself every morning. Boston strong. <laughs> uh, Megan, what do you got? And by the way, I, sh I should add that me and Megan have a Equally good, but different techniques for this. Yeah, yeah. so so mine are, are pretty simple. Mm -hmm. Get active, you know, like go yeah. out, get connected with people, um, seek out friends, family. You mm -hmm. know, if it gets tough enough, there are times when you should, mm -hmm. you know, seek someone who perhaps isn't going through the same thing you're going through. Seek the counseling center. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it is, it is stress-free, and it also can help if you are the one just talking the whole time and there's no one kind of reciprocating those emotions. Well, it, it, it always helps to have a support system. It does. A sounding board and someone you can bounce ideas off exactly. of. Exactly. Also, you know, meditate. Um, I'm, uh, I'm going with one of our camera ops to go meditate Thursday, so I, I think it's, it's a great way to focus your attention, and uh, I think it's, it's just something that can bring you peace and balance. All right. Here's what I got for you. I call it it's my, my patented three Bs. <laughs> Bacon, beets, bedtime. Let me, let me lay it out for you. First you have bacon. It doesn't have to be bacon, but everyone has a special time food, a food that makes them feel good. Um, for a lot of people it is bacon, but it could be Nutella, it could be uh, uh, rice cakes, there you, you know, go. whatever whatever makes you feel good. So you have your food, then we got beats. I'm talking about tunage, I'm talking about music. Um, something to help you, it, you know, it, it's one of two things. You either want music that will relax you or music that will pump you up. Damn. So uh, classical, rock, whatever, and finally, um, Bedtime, because you got to get your beauty sleep. Got to get your sleep, but also keep a smile on your face. Keep a smile on your face. One person who <laughs> always has a smile on her face, even when the news uh, gets kind of tough, as it was this past week, is our own Tamara Sakarzak, and she's leading off today's news stories with the capture of the marathon bombing suspects. Here's Tamara with more. Thanks, guys. Well, Boston can finally resume to a state of normalcy after tragedy, but the FBI's job is far from over. Russian authorities allegedly warned the FBI in 2011 that suspected marathon bomber Tamerlan Cerniov was a follower of radical Islam. Congress is now questioning whether last week's tragedy could have been prevented if the FBI had him on their radar. Cerniov's suspicious activity caught the attention of Russian authorities, but according to the FBI, after investigating him in 2011, he showed no sign of terrorism activity. Investigators defended the FBI, telling media that the suspect appeared to have changed dramatically since 2010, while he began frequently leaving the U.S. and traveling to Russia. Tamerlan Cerniov was killed during a firefight with police early Friday morning. Authorities are finally receiving the answers they've been searching for. The second suspect of the Boston Marathon bombings has regained consciousness and is communicating with authorities through writing. Zokar Cerniov has been in serious condition due to neck and head injuries during a shootout with police Friday evening. The suspect was captured in Watertown during a manhunt that ultimately led authorities to his hiding spot in a resident's backyard. A federal judge conducted a court hearing in the 19-year-old's hospital room yesterday, charging him with conspiring to use a weapon of mass destruction against persons and property, resulting in death. According to Zakar's classmate, the suspect's behavior has never suggested he could commit a crime like this. He's a good guy, I know that, and a lot of people know that, so I want to stand up for him. That's, that's really the reason I'm here, you know, I want people to know he's a good guy. The suspect is facing the possibility of the death penalty or life in prison. On Capitol Hill, conversations regarding gun control are continuing to make their way to Senate. A bipartisan Senate proposal to expand background checks for gun buyers gained the backing of one Republican and the potential support of a second on Sunday. Senators Susan Collins of Maine and Mark Kirk of Illinois are the only Republicans expected to vote for the compromise. A vote will require the support of 60 senators to pass, meaning more, rep more Republicans must comply. 
President Obama told the public last week's decision in Senate to block original legislation seemed like a no-brainer. A minority in the United States Senate decided it wasn't worth it. They blocked common sense gun reforms even while these families looked on from the Senate gallery. Other additions to the legislation are expected to be debated this week. Medical marijuana has made its way to the Ocean State. Rhode Island's first medical marijuana center is open to patients in the city of Providence. The Thomas C. Slater Compassion Center started selling the drug on Friday after receiving its license from the health department earlier this month. Marijuana dispensaries in Warwick and Portsmouth are expected to open in the coming months, joining 12 other states that have legalized the drug for, for medicinal purposes. And those are this morning's headlines. Back to your hosts, Josh and Megan. Thanks, Tammy. So classmates are saying, you know, Sarnev, when we knew him, he was a normal enough person. Is there any indication as to what might have changed his attitude? You know, Josh, I think there's actually a lot of indication that his older brother, Tamerlan, is who changed his attitude. He was really the dominant male figure in um, his younger brother's life after their father moved back to Russia. And as stated by authorities, he also was a part of radical Islam. So I think those two combinations, he could have definitely influenced him and possibly manipulated him. Thanks, Tammy. It's been a rough week here in Boston, and I think we're all hoping for some much-needed sunshine. So here's Maggie Morlath with the forecast. about you guys, but I'm pretty sure I'm coming down with a case of spring fever. With only one week left in school, I'm just itching for summer break. Unfortunately, today will be overcast and chilly, and there's a chance of rain for tomorrow, but the weather should clear up for a beautiful weekend. So let's head to that five day now. Tuesday, cloudy with a high of just 46 and a low of 43. On Wednesday, partly cloudy, but we're warming up to a high of 64 and a low of 39. On Thursday, a chance of a few showers, and we're dropping down to a high of 56 with a low of 32. But on Friday, partly cloudy, and we're back up to a high of 62, low of 43. Then Saturday, much of the same, high 62, low 46. So hang in just one more week, guys. We're almost there. I wish you luck as you finish up those assignments and prepare for finals. Stay sunny. Back to you. Thanks, Maggie. Well, now it's time, I think, to well, talk sports. The Red Sox have gotten back to their winning ways. Here to break it down, it's Anthony Chase. Anthony, good morning to you. It's not often that you hear an expletive on live television, and it's even more rare to hear the FCC support it. In the case of David Ortiz's pregame speech on Saturday, the response has been overwhelmingly positive. We'll show you the clip, but this time you'll have to fill in the blank. We want to thank you, Mayor Menino, Governor Patrick, the whole police department for the great job that they did this past week. <laughs> this is our <laughs> city. The FCC later sent a tweet proclaiming their support of the speech. The Sox ha handed the ball over to Felix Dubrant last night to take on an equally talented Oakland Athletics team. Let's take a look at the action from Fenway. The A's were on an eight game hot streak, but that's not gonna stop the Red Sox in this one. Will Middlebrooks gets the hold on this one. That's over the Green Monster, his fifth home run of the season after a few slow games. That's welcomed. Later on, it's Mike Napoli with the bases loaded, grand slam. Doesn't get much better than that. Sox go up eight to three. Later on, they would take a nine to three lead and the win. The Sox are back to their winning ways, it's safe to say. The Boston Celtics are looking to even the first round of the playoffs at one game each tonight against the Knicks. In the first game, New York received ample support from its oldest but smartest players. Carmelo Anthony boasted a 36-point performance. After the game, Doc Rivers couldn't help but speak highly of him. 40 years old, and half the league is, and I told him that half, 90% of the league is quicker and faster, and he beats everybody with his brain. He really does. He beats them in the ground with his brain. For sports fans, cramming for finals comes with a little silver lining. 
the NFL Draft. This year's class features a slew of defensive demons, and OT Luke Jokel from Texas A&M is a possible first pick. He's followed by defensive linemen Sheriff Floyd and Deion Jordan for top prospects. But with our own New England Patriots, they'll take their usual seat towards the back of the pack. However, Coach Belichick usually manages to find a few gems. The Pats secondary will be at the top of their list, hoping that a good cornerback trickles down to the 29th pick. That's all for your sports. Josh and Megan, back to you. All right, thanks, Anthony. So uh, I'm just going to come out and say it. Uh, Celtics pretty much choked against the Knicks. <laughs> Wasn't a good game. What can they do to come back in the series? Well, Josh, I wouldn't count the Celtics out of any series. Um, these guys play with their hearts out on the court. Um, what they need to do is get second chance points. When you have Kevin Garnett and Brandon Bass, you need to be getting more rebounds and putting the ball back up there. That's really, you know, they can't watch Paul Pierce play. I'm so glad that Jeff Green is playing up to his potential, but the rest of the team has to get involved. And I think the second chance points is what's going to give them the win. Great. Now, speaking of the draft, the Jets have uh, two first round picks after trading Darrell Rebus. What is in New York's game plan for heading into Thursday? Right, New York now gets to pick 9th and 13th. Uh, it's actually a tragedy that Revis is gone. He was a superstar on that team, one of the only ones that they had. But they're really going to have to make up for him. And then I think offense, offense, offense is going to be their next move. Thanks, Anthony. We're going to take a quick break. But when we come back, we'll be joined by the Emerson Channel's director of production, Rob Barton. He's going to be telling us how you can get involved in orientation series. You won't want to miss it. Welcome back. So every summer, the Emerson Channel produces three weeks of award-winning television called Orientation Series. Let's take a look at some of last summer's work. We are back. It is Fast Forward Rewind, the show where we tell you what's going on at Emerson before and after it happens. Coming up, Jackie Tiongson will fill you in on the orientation dance. Everyone's just themselves, like I can wear this and you know, it's fine. Alum Nikki Gerber will be joining us via Skype. Daily life for me, because I'm a morning anchor. I solo produce and anchor the show myself. And don't forget to live tweet your answer to our trivia challenge. Here with your guide to college life, it's Fast Forward Rewind. We're here now with the one, the only Rob Barton, director of production for the Emerson Channel. So Rob, what does Emer the orientation series consist of? Yes, yeah, so the orientation series consists of two shows. There's Fast Forward Rewind and Backyard Boston, one of which is a studio show and one of which is a field show. Um, and together they form the orientation series, which is basically a program that airs daily, live, five times a week through the 26th to the 30th of August, so all the way through orientation week, is the guide for any incoming students um, to know what's going on on campus, what's going on off campus, all the events, all the new students, everything. Great. Right, and both shows are a lot of fun. I've had uh, different roles in both of them, but uh, uh, they do differ. So can you kind of break those down? Yeah, of course. So Fast Forward Rewind is an in-studio show, as I mentioned before. And both air live five times a week. But Fast Forward Rewind is geared more towards what exactly is happening on campus. So all the orientation events, who the new students are, it's meant for the students to really see what's happening through orientation week on Emerson's campus. Whereas Backyard Boston kind of varies in that it tries to get off of campus, you know, see what's happening in different neighborhoods around the city. So you have Back Bay and the North End and what places are cool to hang out in, where is it cool to eat. Great. And now how can students that are, right now, students at Emerson College get involved in these productions? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the first way to get involved, I would recommend that anybody who's interested in the orientation series comes to the Emerson Channel General Meeting this Wednesday at 10 p.m. in the Billboard. It's the last one of the semester, and there we're going to be releasing all the hiring information and all of that in ways you can get involved. However, the crew interviews, well, production staff, rather, um, so if you want to be an AP or a segment producer or learn how to edit or things of that sort, you come out to the production staff interviews this upcoming Sunday from 12 to 5 in Piano Row 118. Um, the auditions will be this upcoming Saturday in Piano Row 118 from 1 to f or from 12 to 4. Great, great. and uh, it's an absolutely great experience. It uh, is. Get involved if you can. It's a lot of fun. Rob Barton, uh, director of production, our glorious leader. Thanks for stopping by. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's that time now where uh, we take a look at the entertainment world. And uh, for more on that, we're going to head over to Logan Levitt. Good morning to you. 
Actress Reese Witherspoon was arrested Friday in Atlanta, Georgia after an incident with police. Witherspoon's husband, Agent Jim Toth, was arrested for driving under the influence after cops saw him weaving in and out of lanes. Toth claimed he had one drink that night, but his blood alcohol level was .139. As Toth was being arrested, Witherspoon began to yell out from the car, growing increasingly aggravated by how slow the arrest was taking. Even though police told her to stay in the car, she proceeded to get out and yell at the cop. She reportedly asked if he knew who she was, and when he said he didn't, she said he was about to. She was then arrested for disorderly conduct. They were both taken to jail, booked, and released within hours. Witherspoon is in Atlanta filming a movie. It looks like Witherspoon's squeaky clean image is officially gone. Kim Kardashian is officially divorced. The reality TV star and basketball player Chris Humphreys have settled their year and a half long divorce battle. Humphreys was originally attempting to get an annulment, claiming Kardashian married him for publicity and to make money off the wedding, a claim Kardashian vehemently denied. However, realizing this case was going south, Humphreys softened his position and decided it was just best to go ahead with the divorce. Kim Kardashian showed up to the hearing while Chris Humphreys chose to practice with his NBA team. The court hit Humphreys hard with a series of fines for not showing up. But hey, he's officially free of the Kardashians. Ozzy Osbourne and his wife Sharon Osbourne have reportedly split. TMZ first reported that the Osbournes have separated and have been living separately. Sources claim that Sharon is living at the Beverly Hills Hilton, while Ozzy is living in a rented home several miles from the hotel. However, sources claim that they have no plans for a divorce. Sharon and Ozzy have been married for 31 years and have three kids together. Finally, Justin Bieber may be Selena Gomez's boyfriend yet again. Rumors began to circulate of a possible reconciliation when Selena Gomez jetted off to Norway Friday. Coincidentally, the same day Justin Bieber had a concert in the country. Although there were reports that Bieber and Gomez have been seeing each other off and on since they broke up last November, Gomez stated firmly that she was single on The Late Show with David Letterman last month. However, Saturday night, Justin Bieber Instagrammed a photo of him and Selena together snugly and then quickly deleted it within minutes. While running to a waiting car, Justin Bieber flashed paparazzi a shot of his background of his phone, which has Selena on it. Looks like they may be officially reunited. Now I'm going to send it back to two people who I'm sure are very excited about Justin Bieber and Selena Gomez reunion, Megan and Josh. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm lukewarm. I mostly want Selena to be happy, but here, here, here's, here, here's my question. Uh, why is he being so cryptic about the whole thing? Well, we don't exactly know why he's being so cryptic. I think that, like I said, they have been seeing each other off and on since they broke up last November. And I think that one quick uh, shot of the picture was his way of saying they are back together and leave them alone. Okay, great. Sounds good, Logan. We're going to take a quick break, but when we return, we're going to come back to our musical guest, Ethan Thompson. All right, welcome back. We're about to be joined by Berkeley musician and a very talented one, Ethan Thompson. Yeah, let's turn it over to our musical correspondent, Rob Kohler. Rob, good morning to you. Good morning to you too, Megan. Today we are joined in studio with Berkeley student Ethan Thompson. Ethan has been writing and performing his own music for quite a few years now and has been featured on shows such as The Sing-Off and The X Factor. More recently, Ethan has won Perez Hilton's Can You Sing cover contest. Ethan, thank you very much for coming in today. So I know we missed out on a package this week because yeah. of a lot of events in Boston, but um, tell us how you got started making your music. Um, I started when I was about 15, uh, just got up and started playing guitar one day because my dad had one, uh, and he taught me a few basic chords. The first song I think I learned was Last Kiss, and then I uh, played that in a talent show, and after that just started writing my own music. Um, and from there, uh, Went to college at a university for a bit, did classical training, then realized that wasn't really what I wanted to do. So I switched to songwriting and transferred out here to Berkeley. Cool. So I'm talking about Berkeley. How do you think that being at Berkeley has evolved your sound and your songwriting skills? Um, I think it's really developed me just as a person and as a uh, performer a lot because of the talent that's around there is just so strong. Uh, that being around all these people and just soaking up that environment all the time is something that really just makes you stronger as an artist, just being around all these people, these guys included. Cool, cool. Uh, so um, obviously being on The X Factor and the sing-off is pretty cool. You also have celebrity judges and feedback. So talk a little bit about that experience and what you got out of those shows. Uh, the thing that's funny about those shows is once you do them, you realize that they're just shows. That's like the biggest thing uh, that I realized about them. The, the talent search aspect of them isn't really as heavy as the fact that it's a show. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I did The X Factor, it was uh, funny because I did the live uh, audition process. And once I went through that, it was a great reaction from the crowd and all that. But after I got did that uh, process, it was kind of just a show from there on out. 
Great. So um, describe your songwriting um, process and where do you get inspiration from music and then how does it develop from a song later down the road? Uh, I kind of get my inspiration by something happens in life and I really don't deal with it and then because I don't really wear my emotions on my sleeve okay. and then about a week later I'll start feeling uh, emotions building and then I'll write a song from there. Cool. So really quick, where can fans in the Boston area, where can people expect to see you next? Um, I'll be playing around. I'm not sure where next. A lot of things got canceled because of unfortunately last week. Mm -hmm. um, but there'll be uh, dates on my Facebook, which is uh, facebook.com slash Ethan Thompson Music. Cool. Well, thank you guys very much again for being here. Yeah, so now I finally got to hear you guys play. So here's Ethan Thompson with Only One. Take it away, guys. sunrise I'll hold your soul with mine my angel cause you're my only one until my days are done and I can live in your love cause you're my only one and I won't eat much cause you fill my cup and you're my only one until my days are done and you're my only one and I'm your only one until my days are done I wish to meet you by our river Where the fields are tall and grand Where we laughed and loved at sunrise I know you're always near my angel Cause you're my only one until my days are done And I can live in love Cause you're my only one And I won't need much Cause you fill my cup And you're my only one Until my days are done And I'm your only one And you're my only one Until my days are done Until my days are done, and I'm your only one. Until my days are done, and you're my only one. Until my days are done. Woo! Wow! Great job! Fantastic, guys. Thank now, uh, thanks again to Ethan Thompson for being with us today. But that's our show, everyone. It's hard to believe that uh, next episode will be our last. I know, that's right, Megan. But Thursday is going to be an awesome show. Justin Chun is stopping by to prepare us some authentic Mexican food. And Bianca Bono is going to give us one last workout to hopefully last through the summer. <laughs> to play it out, uh, here is Unquestionably Human by Ethan Thompson. This city lies sleeping Yet here I lay awake Eyes open, mind dreaming Will I always make mistakes? I'm asking for guidance Cause I can't do this on my own 
for someone that's me with don't you see that there is beauty in your soul oh yeah it's deeper and more divine than any you'll ever know yeah and deep in darkness fades the light in the end and that's what makes us unquestionably human Questionably human. The daylight is beaming as I try to give a shake. Oh, to all these past feelings, will I always feel this way? Like I'm looking for answers and I can't do this on my own, no. Will someone answer me with, don't you see that there is beauty in your soul, oh yeah. It's deeper and more divine than any you'll ever know, yeah. And deep in darkness fades the light in the end. And that's what makes us so questionable. And when I have doubts myself, the answer's in my head, yes, here's what I said. Don't you see, there is beauty in your soul, it's deeper and more divine than any you'll ever know. Don't you see that there is beauty in every soul, it's deeper and That's what makes us so questionably human. Unquestionably human. The daylight is beaming. Yet here 